Hi Year Tens, we are back and this time we're factorising non-monic trinomials. So you remember from last lesson, non-monic means that the coefficient of the x squared term is not 1. So in this case, in most of our examples are all going to be greater than 1. So here it's got 4x squared, so that means it's a non-monic trinomial. Alrighty, so I'll let you copy down those notes. Remember, pause it as you go. Copy down just that page and then I'm just going to show you examples. Alrighty, good job everyone. So, if you remember last lesson, we had to put our brackets in and we looked for the last term, had to, we looked for factors of the last term which added to the middle number. This time it's a little bit compli more complicated because we have another number out the front of the x squared. So when we do our two brackets, like this, we're going to have, it's not just x and x. Our very first step last time was, because that was an x squared, we put an x there and an x there. Because when you expand, then you get the x squared. But this time we've got 6x squared. So this makes it a little bit more complicated. So we've got a couple of possibilities. We could have a 1x squared there and a 6x squared there because factors of 6 are 1 and 6. Or we could have a 2x squared there and a 3x squared there because when you multiply those two together, 2x, sorry, just x and 6x squared, no squareds. Because when you multiply 2x by 3x, you end up with 6x squared. So you've got extra possibilities. And then, of course, the factors of 10, 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. So you've got a whole range of different possibilities. So there are several ways to do this. The textbook talks about um, a method called a cross method. I'm going to explain that briefly in a second, which is pretty much what I do, but I like doing it mentally. But I kind of use a cross method in my brain. There is another method as well in the textbook where they um, use pairing. So it's sort of like you turn it into four terms and work it out, but you can look at that yourself. So I'll just explain the way that I do it normally. All right. So let's start this one again. So 6x squared, we can have 6x or 1x, or we can have 3x and 2x. All right, factors of 10. We've got 1 and 10. So we've got 1 and 10, or we've got 2 and 5. So now, we know, we know that both sides are plus. At least we know that. We can put that in. So now we have to find a combination of some of these that are going to give us 19x in the middle. So are we going to use 6x and 1x? So if we do that, we can either use a combination of these ones, or we can use 6x with a 2 and with a 5, or a combination of the x maybe goes with a 2, well, that goes with a 5. So it gets a little bit complicated. So what I like to do is I literally guess and check a little bit. So I rub it out if I'm not right. So let's try this one. I'll start with 6x and x. So that's my guess. I'm trying 6x and x. Now, factors of 10. And I need to get, remember, I need to get 19x as a middle term. I'm going to go 5 and 2. So if I put a 5 here and a 2 there, let's just check. Here I've got 5x. And here I've got 12x. 5x and 12x, does that work out? No, that adds up to 17x. So that is not the correct answer, not the correct combination. So we can rub that out. And then I could try in my head 1 and 10. I don't think that's going to work because if I put a 10 there, I've got 10x. And a 1 there, I've got 6x. That's 16x. If I put it the other way, 10 there, I've got 60x, which is way too much. So maybe I could try, and I just tried 2 and 5. So perhaps 6x and 1x is not the answer. Let's try 3x and 2x. Sounds complicated at the start, but once you practice a little bit, it's not too bad. So now I'm going to try factors of 10, 1 and 10, or 2 and 5. Generally speaking, I don't go to the extreme ones. I'll try the 2 and 5 first. So if I put a 5 there and a 2 there, this will give me 10x, and this one here will give me 6x. That adds to 16x, so that's not the right answer. What if we changed it around, made that a 2 and that a 5? What do we get then? So we've got 2x, 2 times 2x is 4x. 5 times 3x is 15x. 15x and 4x is 19x. So we did all that work, but I tried to explain it to you. That's why it took so long. Generally, that's our correct answer, by the way, because we've got our 19x in the middle. Generally, once you practice these, you'll just do all that, that whole process in your brain a little bit. Try and figure out which um, factors of 10 
and the factors of six and look for combinations that are going to give you 19x in the middle. Hopefully that made some sense. Let's do some more practice ones over here. So, remember, by the way, when it's a non-monic, always look for a common factor first. So there's no common factor there. So let's try our, we'll put our brackets in. So remember, if you prefer a different method, like the cross method that the book talks about, or the other method, that is fine. Um, 9x squared. I'm going to start with 3x and 3x, because 3 times 3, 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Okay, it's a minus. Remember from last lesson, that's a minus at the end. One's a plus and one's a minus. So this time we're looking for a difference to be positive 6x. And now we want factors of 8. So what have we got? We've got 1 and 8 or 2 and 4. So if we put a 2 there, next to one of them we'll get 6x. And a 4, 4 threes are 12. Yep, that sounds like it'll work. So if we put a 4 on this one, a 4 and a 2 there. Watch what happens. We'll get here positive 6x, and this one will be negative 12x. Now, if you add those two together, it gives you negative 6x, but we want it to be positive 6x. So what do we do? We'd swap those signs around, make that a plus, and that one a negative there. So perhaps do this in pencil, or if you do it in pen, just be, be prepared to cross it out, and then try again. So let's try this again. So now we've got negative 6x, and this one will be positive 12x, which is, gives us our positive 6x. So we know that's correct. Can you see that? So you've got lots of different possibilities with both the 9x squared and the negative 8. You've got to look for factors of both of those and try and do it mentally in your brain until you get the, the right answer, in this case, plus 6x. Let's try again. So 6x squared. Okay, at least it's all pluses, so we know that it's a plus there and a plus there. So 6x, I could try either try 6x and 1x, but I'm going to go 3x and 2x, because I, I like doing the middle ones, they'll normally work pretty well. Factors of 3 are only 1 and 3, so we've got no possibilities other than that. So do we put the 3 here? Do we want the 3 to go with this 3? That would make 9x. If we put a 1 there, it would make 2x, which gives us 11. So we'll put a 3 there and a 1 there. Let's check. This will give us plus 2x. 3 times 3 is 9x. 2x plus 9x gives us our 11x. Hopefully it's making a little bit more sense now. Let's try the next one. The only way to get good at this is to practice. So after this, I suggest you start the exercise and practice with the easy ones first. Okay. 8x squared. So we've got a few possibilities. 8x and 1x or 4x and 2x. I'm going to go 4x and 2x. Now, it's a negative, which means one's a plus and one's a minus, but I don't really know which one's which just yet, so maybe I'll leave that out. And factors of three are three and one, so that's nice and easy. And we want the difference to be positive 10x. So I'm thinking if the three goes with the four, so the three goes here, that'll connect with the four, and that'll give us 12x. And if we put the one there, that'll give us one times 2x is 2x. Then we have a difference of 10x, don't we? But remember, one has to be plus and one has to be minus. So I'll make this one plus, because that'll give us plus 12x, and this one minus, because that'll give us minus 2x. And then that gives us our plus 10x. So that's one method of doing it. So I stress, it's, I'm doing it all mentally. If you, once you get good at it, you can do it this method. If not, there are several methods. Look in Cambridge textbook online, and they explain it in different ways. All right, I'm going to do a harder example in just one second. Press. Yeah. Are you tens? Okay, so here's a tricky example. Once you've got the gist of how to factorise non-monic trinomials, then you'll get a hard question. We saw one of these in the last lesson as well. So when you've got the fractions, remember what you have to do. You have to factorise each section, each part, and then you can cancel anything from the top with anything from the bottom that's identical. But you cannot cancel... You always get people that say, oh, there's an x squared and an x squared, and they cancel those. You cannot do that. You must factorise first. Alrighty, so let's... Setting out is crucial for these questions. So we'll start with this one here. 4x squared minus 9. Now, hopefully you remember from our second video, this is DOPS. This is the same as 2x all squared minus 3 squared. So if you remember DOPS... But the problem is you don't really get a chance here 
to have lots of lines for working out. So hopefully by now you can pretty much identify that and you can go 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. If you need to, do it off to the side like that and then you can work it out. So here's our first one, 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Alright, the next one, it's got as a non-monic, always look for a common factor first, but there's no common factor. So we're going to have to do a non-monic. So it's good practice for you. 10x squared is a bit of a pain. Let's try 5x and 2x. It may not work, but it might work. It's a negative, so we know one's a plus and one's a minus. I'll leave that out for now. And it's 3, which is good, so it's just 3 and 1. And we want it to be 13. So I'm going to put a 3 there, which will go with the 5x, which will make 15x. And the 1 there, which will make it 2x. And I want it to be plus 13x, so I'll make that one a plus. So it's plus 15 and minus 2, which just gives us our plus 13. Hopefully you understood that. Let's move on. Now this one, it's something special as well. It's actually called a perfect square. But let's work it out anyway, and hopefully you'll see something once we're finished. So 25x squared. Do you notice that's a square number, everybody? Remember at the start I said, be aware of square numbers. So I'm going to write 5x and 5x. 1 is also a square number which is very handy because we know both numbers here are 1 and 1, and it's a plus, so both signs are the same, and they're both negatives. So that was quite easy, and that's called a perfect square. 5x minus 1, 5x minus 1. There weren't too many options with that one. And let's do the bottom one. 10x squared, I'm going to go 5x and 2x again. I don't know if that's going to be right. But, and the fact is 3 and 1, so I'll make that a 3, which will give me 15, 1, which will give me 2. It's a plus, so they're both negatives. Plus means they're both the same sign. Because it's a negative, they're both negatives. Alright, we've done all the hard work now. Now this is the fun bit. You get a red pen and you cross out everything that's the same from top and bottom. So 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3. 5x minus 1 and 5x minus 1. 2x minus 3 with 2x minus 3. So what have we got left? Whoa! 5x minus 1 over 5x minus 1. And everything's gone, but don't make a mistake. Some people say nothing's left and write zero. That is incorrect. When you cancel stuff, you're left with one all the time. So it's one over one, so the answer's just one. Good job, everyone. Hopefully you understood that. Come over here, everyone, and exercise 5D, page 372. There's your questions. Try your best. Start on the easy ones, and you can do it. Once you get practice, once you practice at it, then you'll find it really easy. Good job.